The starting point from the paper is that there's so much amazing variation across states. Some states did four times better than other states. And so what we really tried to do was explore and understand why there's so much variation across the U.S. states, across the entire pandemic. And, you know, after we've controlled for important things like age and comorbidity, we find that that variation persists. We examined a broad range of social, economic, and racial factors to assess reasons for variations across states in terms of their infection rate and the death rate. And we found that states with higher rates of poverty, lower educational attainment, and lower rates of interpersonal trust, which is the trust that we place in one another, were all states that, were, that exhibited higher death rates and higher infection rates. Nearly every state in the 26 worst performing states, the bottom half of performers in this pandemic falls into one of three buckets. They are either states with a disproportionately high population, higher than the national average of people reporting or identifying rather as Hispanic. They are, that's category one. Category two is a disproportionately high number of individuals, higher than the national average, identifying as black. The third category is uh, high levels of support for the 2020 Republican presidential candidate. Social and economic factors were a large driver of differences between states. And again, those tend to cluster in certain types of, of states. Um, but they're not the only differences. Uh, we saw healthcare capacity measures in terms of lower access to, um, to quality healthcare, lower rates of uh, insured matter as well. In the differences we uh, were able to observe in deaths between uh, states. And on the infection side, behaviors and mandates mattered a lot. I think Arizona is a state with inequality, um, some poverty, and, and you know, ultimately some of the vaccination rates and behaviors didn't line up to have good outcomes. States that did well, uh, states like Hawaii, um, New Hampshire, Washington State, uh, are states in, in most cases uh, have done a good job restricting travel, uh, have in some cases less poverty, less inequality, um, and relatively high vaccination rates. We looked specifically at if there were trade-offs in COVID outcomes, you know, did states with more infections uh, have, have better economies? So, you know, the question is, could you, could you buy your economy by uh, having more infections or, or, or more mortality? And what we found is there really was no relationship between infections or mortality and a state's GDP. What we did found as far as trade-offs was that there was a relationship between infections and mortality and employment. And this uh, you know, suggests that the states that were willing to accept higher infection and mortality rates uh, were able to keep a higher employment rate. We can invest in programs that protect the communities that we see were disproportionately affected by the pandemic. We can invest in programs such as paid family leave, paid sick leave, uh, expanded health, health insurance and expanded Medicaid. These sorts of programs will protect individuals in a lower income bracket and hopefully uh, help avoid some of the unnecessary loss that we experienced in this pandemic. For me, looking forward, I think one of the most important things is that to recognize that we could have done better. That, that you know, some states are examples of what is possible in the United States, uh, and some states reflect, you know, uh, essentially the kind of the worst case scenarios. That huge amount of variation, I think, is important. 
What this study does teach us is ultimately the best performing U.S. states were able to compete in this pandemic with any country in the world. They're as good as any country in Scandinavia in terms of their performance. But the worst performing states were among the worst performers in the world. And if we can lift up the performance of some of those worst, uh, more poorly performing states, it could make a world of difference in the next health crisis we face.